So here it is with some uh, salt water in it and some sand and and coral. <laughs> no, it's just a like a piece of a uh, like coral branch or whatever. It does have a little bit of growth on there somewhere. Um, but yeah. <laughs> That's not the only thing I got though. Right now the lid is off because I'm probably going to put the rocks in tomorrow. Um, check this out. The skimmer is quite frothy now. Look at that. If you remember before with fresh water, it was just bubbles. But now that there's salt water in there, it's not just bubbles. It's like foam. Like froth. And I put some carbon in the reactor. Uh, it said uh, a tablespoon for 10 gallons. I think I did 8 tablespoons, so like 80 gallons. So I figure 60 plus maybe 20 for the sump. So hopefully that's enough. Carbon is one of those things we have a tendency to waste because it just goes bad. So hopefully that, that works. We'll see how that goes. Um, all the probes are in and calibrated. And you can see there's still some saltiness at the bottom here. Um, the turn pumps down there. That blue tube is actually coming from the RODI. And um, it's not actually on right now or anything. You can see I got the drain in place as well. And the pump is on, the wave pump is on. It's not on high or anything. Oh, the other thing I got is the door switch. So you got the little switch there. Magnet. You can even tell. See the little, it almost like lights up the tank bottom. It's kind of funny. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. I do like that. So what I'm missing is a doorbell switch for the feed mode. I'm going to be adding that uh, probably, hopefully tomorrow maybe. I'm also going to try to see if I can add just a like a preliminary float switch to determine that the water is too high in the uh, in the sump down there. And also I have coming a, uh, I can't remember what the heck it's called. Um, it's the thing from a vast that that squeegees out the um, the skimmer, and then I also got a pressure switch from a vast that I'm going to use to act as a skimmer shut off. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is in that little space in the front there, in front of the sump, try to build a container of some sort that could hold all the skimmate. Uh, all the junk skimming, you know, this, this crap from the skimmer, basically. Because um, this is really the only space I have that'll fit it. And so I need to build some kind of rectangular box that fits in front of the uh, in front of the sump here. Hello, kitty. When this is fresh water, I think he was going in there and taking a sip. But now that it's salt water, I'm almost curious to let him try and see what he does. <laughs> He's going to learn the hard way if he tries. There's not regular water in there anymore. The salt water is, uh, I believe it's uh, around 31 parts per thousand, I think is how they measure it. Um, I'm supposed to be getting some damselfish uh, to help cycle it. Um, you know, this thing is living here to some extent. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, in terms of cycling, I'm not really sure how that works with salt water, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's go upstairs and I'll show you the other rock I got that's in the process of uh, basically cleaning. So, all right, pause the video and I'll go upstairs.
So here we are in the uh, master bathroom here, and I I use this a lot for cleaning rocks and stuff because I got this big bathtub here, which takes a uh, faucet adapter, and I get some serious water pressure out of this thing. Right now, I'm actually just using this power head and this uh, aqua clear to to basically rinse uh, the sock. It's a brand new filter sock. I like to just pre-rinse them. So that's what's going on there. But here are the crazy ass coral rock things I got. <sighs> that's pretty big. I don't know how that'll go, but something. <laughs> um, so yeah, I need to get this thing rinsed off. There's like some spider webs and crap on it, but um, once it's all cleaned up, then it can go into the uh, into the tank. And then, like I said, hopefully damselfish will be the first fish. They're just gonna be to cycle it. They have a uh, like a rent a fish thing. <laughs> They'll buy the fish back after you cycle it. I mean, I do think damselfish are cool, but I don't think they'll... They probably won't be good for this tank. They'd probably be too mean. Hmm. So, those are the rocks. I mean, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty cool looking. But, um... Yeah, it's going to be an adventure to, to get those in there. Not only that, but it's not even really enough rock. Um, so ultimately, I want to buy uh, some more, and um, so that's part of the fun as well. I don't know how much more. These are actually pretty big for their weight. These are only like 15 pounds, I think, for the both of them, and they're pretty big for 15 pounds. I mean, that would, that right there is a pretty big chunk of the tank, so I'm almost concerned about over doing it, you know, putting too much in there. Um, so we'll see. I think uh, for now I'm just going to clean it up, sort of put it in there, see what it looks like, and uh, hopefully get some more ordered as well. These things are very, uh, I don't know, they look like branches almost, so I can imagine sticking things in between there. And just kind of having it packed filled with crazy goodness. <laughs> so, well, we'll see. Uh, the bigger one in the back seems like it might be a little bit of struggles to, to keep it balanced. So I'm not sure how that'll... might be something I could lean against the overflow because it's plastic. So I don't mind leaning something against it as much. Not as bad as leaning against glass anyway, so... Yeah, maybe le have that one in the back, leaned against the overflow. What I may want to do, since it's got such a cool shape to it, could almost be up at the top. So if I could get some uh, of the other kind of rock I was looking to get, which is called Pukani, I think, um, then I could have that on the bottom maybe, and then maybe this on top to kind of add that to that look. But... um I don't know what this is. It almost it looks like branches almost, but it's it's deeper than than most branchy pieces and it's not really just branches. So it's interesting. I guess we'll see uh, how it works. I think it is prehistoric dead coral. I think is what it is. So I mean, you look at this thing. It's crazy looking. But, um, yeah, no, I wanted something that looks crazy and, like, some crazy coral thing. I definitely think this one suits the bill. <laughs> but I think I want to get some of that other stuff as well mixed in. It's going to really, I think, all together, 
uh, you know, add to the sort of look that I'm going for, which is basically just absurd reef thing, you know, I, I wanted to just look like, um, some crazy thing that came out of the ocean, you know, I'm not trying to destroy the entire habitat to do that, but, you know, many of these things did come out of the ocean at some point. <sighs> so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to give these a rinse here. I still have my, uh, my garden hose that I can attach to the faucet. So I'll probably put that on a shower spray and um, spray these off. So I could even sort of give a little demo of how this works. Okay, so this is now attached. That's now attached. And this is on output mode. And now I'm waiting for this to fill. I like this mode because it's like a shower, but it's like a pressure, more pressure than the standard shower mode. Now one of these things had some pretty gnarly spider web things on the bottom. So I definitely want to get that off. I'm kind of curious how hollow these things are. It does look like it's, uh, it's almost changing color just from adding water. They did say that they probably turned brown. I put them in. Ooh, and there's that crazy spider web. Man, I sure hope there's no spiders actually in there. That'd be kind of spooky. It looks like some kind of nest or something. <laughs> you can do the full pressure mode. So yeah, that's pretty much what I gotta do. Spray this sucker down. You can see there's definitely dirt coming off of it. Look at all that. That all came from this. So these definitely needed a spray down. From what I understand, they were sitting in a garage or something for a while. The person who bought them originally uh, didn't use them or something. These were not exactly cheap either. It's like five bucks a pound or something, but. They were actually really light for the size, so that almost worked to my favor because they really weren't that expensive given how big they are. But you can see these are pretty dramatic looking. On the bottom it's more just like a rock looking thing. You can only imagine how old these things are. Probably millions of years old or something. I mean, for a coral to be that old and turn into rock like that. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, look at that dirt. That all came off of here. It's pretty crazy. So I might stick these in the Home Depot bucket right here. I might soak them in there. 
for a little while. I don't know if I'll soak them in anything in particular, just water. But, um, I don't know. Seems like it might be a good idea just to soak them, just to make sure there's nothing uh, residual on them. You have to spray them down. Because who knows where these things have been. Who knows if the person before me tried to bleach them or, uh, you know, who knows what. And given they're turning a little brown, makes me think they probably weren't bleached. Because usually if you bleach a rock, it's, it's pretty white, you know, it turns like a bleach white. And the fact that these are turning kind of brown and spraying them with water makes me think they're probably pretty close to clean, just, you know, not completely bleached or anything, just, uh, cleaned. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to keep at it here. I think you all get the idea. It's not exactly the most exciting thing in the world, but... This is my crazy contraption. This is how I clean rocks and other things. Big things in particular. This bathtub makes it nice and easy. Especially with this magic spray hose coming off of my python here. Alright, well I'll finish this up and soak them in that five gallon bucket and then uh, we'll see. Alright, so let's pause it here. Maybe I can fast forward to the bucket. So after much cleaning and spraying they're now in the bucket and I basically sprayed, filled the bucket till the bucket was clear. Um, it actually was surprisingly still a little cloudy despite me spraying this thing for nearly a half hour straight. So I am just wedging this in the bottom running the water and it's clear now so I was surprised it was foggy at all with the amount of uh, time I spent spraying it but I'm guessing uh, I think they're hollow it definitely after cleaning them and seeing how it reacts I'm pretty sure that the rocks are hollow and there was stuff inside of them that was coming out as I was jetting water into them but um yeah for now it's uh they're looking pretty clean. I'm not sure if uh, I might just dry them off. Let them soak overnight. Pull them out in the morning. Dry them off. And then, um, you know, hopefully at that point, we'll be good. But, um, yeah, I'm hoping to put these in tomorrow. It's still not enough rock, though, so I need to figure out what I'm doing sooner than later. But once I figure out what I'm doing, then all of this is going to go in. I'll probably still put these in, but I may later pull them out again and rearrange the rocks and all that fun. Plus, i got to do all this again for the new rocks I get, so that will be fun. I am tempted to maybe soak them in RO water. I don't know if that really matters, but the thought came to mind. Um... I don't know. Probably not necessary if I drain them off and dry them off. I don't think it'll make a difference. It's got a pretty good amount of water coming out of there. Alright, so I think I'm going to turn this off now. And that's completely filled. So... For now, good enough for now, I guess. All right, we'll see how they do in the morning. Hopefully, they'll be in the tank next time I do a video of these things. Whoa! <laughs> All right.